My next guest has been described as being invaluable, dedicated, hardworking, reliable, and most of all, a good mate. Those words belong to Ricky Orchin, and he's describing his first-hand man, Ricky Hunt, who joins me now. Well, Ricky, what goes through your mind when you hear those words from the boss? Uh, yeah, that's very good to hear, and um, he is a great mate of mine, and no, I really appreciate everything he's done for me, and he's really helped me out through my career in the last six years, so yeah, no, very grateful for everything he's done. Ricky, it might be time to put in for a pay rise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we, um, we do go all right. We, um, he loves to look after me and that, so yeah, I... I couldn't thank him enough for everything he's done for me, so yeah. Now Ricky, before we have a look at your career, in particular what you've done with Ricky since you've linked up with him, it must get a bit confusing. I know both Rickies are spelled differently, but this is something like bananas and pyjamas, B1 and B2. We've got R1 and R2. No, no, I just get called Rex, so yeah, they just everyone calls me Rex. I actually call it myself now, I don't think that's my name. <laughs> well Ricky, let's have a look at this career. Where did it all begin? Uh, yeah, back in... Oh, 2000 maybe even earlier I was um, at home and dad always bred a foal or two and then I got real keen and um, helped out a couple of people in parks which is where I'm from and yeah just went from there and really got the bug and I thought I want to give it a go full time. Your first big career move Ricky was when you moved over to work with Shane Trent and Michael Formosa that must have been a wonderful experience and a time to really educate yourself. Oh definitely that was a big eye opener moving from home from parks work and four horses and up there was working 40 or 50 with Shane and that. No, he taught me a real lot up there, Shane and that, and I couldn't thank him enough for the time I was up there. And Then I went on to work for Mick Formosa for two years. That was just a lovely family and he really showed me a lot more and taught me a few more things about driving and all that. Yeah, so, no, they were really good to me. Ricky, we haven't seen the driver's list all that often. Is it something you inspire to do more or are you happy just learning the trade as being a trainer? No, I'm happy just to take a seat back and be the trainer and help Ricky out and that. I, I um, have a few drives here and there, but I focus more on training instead of driving. What was the move to Ricky all about? The chance to experience a whole new scene here at Clubman Angle? Oh, definitely. I definitely like have perfect facilities here and when the job offer come up I thought well it'd be silly not to take it and, um, and he had a lot of young horses he breaks a lot of horses in which is something I've never done and wanted to learn a bit about myself and even the trotters he had a good horse tough one up he was um, only very lightly raced in his career and I wanted to learn about the trotters and that and, yeah he, they've taught me a lot too the trotters and that and with Rick's help and that yeah no I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, it's one thing about Ricky Stable, he does go right across the board, the youngsters, the Pacers and the Trotters, the established stars, so you do cover all bases. Yeah, definitely, yeah. We um, break a lot in and watch them improve and make it to the races and that's very rewarding, breaking one in and watching it come to the races and be in the races, like, hopefully in a group one and that, yeah. And do you enjoy that task of educating the young horses? Oh, definitely, yeah. I, I really enjoy that side of things, getting a young one, educating it. And, yeah, no, it's really good, that. It also gives Ricky the opportunity, and he's mentioned this on a couple of occasions, to go to Queensland where he loves to go with his horses and also does a bit of fishing on the side, which he certainly loves to do. And the fact that he can leave you in charge of these stables, it's rewarding for you to know you can be put in charge and also that Ricky's back up in Queensland with a peace of mind. Oh, definitely. Rick trusts me a lot with his horses when he goes away and, and I can't thank him enough for the opportunity he's given me when he's gone away and to look after some of the good horses and that we've had here. And, even at the end of the last season, he let me go down to Melbourne with the tough love and that for the Breeders' Crown and what's up Majestic and we qualified all our trotters for the final. And that was a big thrill, but knowing that I was down there and we could work together and yeah, that was a great thrill. And once again, it's a wonderful working experience. Oh, definitely. You get to go down there and meet new people and, and travel with good horses and yeah, that's something I really like doing and yeah, so that's great. And, Ricky, you did have one thing on your bucket list. You wanted to drive a winner here at Club Menanga. You did that back in June of 21 when our action man saluted and you were absolutely tickled pink. Oh, definitely. And I still to this day, I didn't think I won the race. I thought Rick's brother Alex beat me on the line. But no, when they said you won, I was actually so excited. And yeah, it was pretty sweet, actually. You are associated with a nice horse that meant a lot to you called Mossdale Bill. Yeah, he was a nice little horse. Um, Dad purchased him from New Zealand for us and um, I think he came over and he won his first three and 
he was a lovely little horse for us. So yeah, no, I've, he was a nice horse, and just things went wrong with him um, early on, and just couldn't get him back to his best. But no, he was a nice horse. Ricky, you mentioned Tough Monarch earlier. He was back to his best here on Saturday night. Before the race, Ricky Elton was telling me that he thought he looked good, he felt better than what he was during the Inter-Dominion Carnival. Yeah, Ricky and his voice himself was real happy with him the week leading into the race. Um, and he was really good the other night. Um, that was just a nice little run first up for him after a bit of a let-up after the Inter-Dominion. And, um, yeah, pulled through that run really good. So he'll head off to Melbourne now for the... Group 1's down there, the Great Southern Stars, his main target. Uh, that's where he's aiming for. A couple of the stable stars went around the trial here before the first race on the card, won by Zeus Bromac, which led throughout in scoring in very good style, 152-4. Two of the stable stars, Crunch Time and Captain Crusader, went about and performed very nicely in running third and fourth, respectively. Yeah, that's right. They were really good today. We didn't push them and do too much, just let them sit in and hit the line strong and they were really good we were really happy with them so they're going to look to have a start the next week or two and get ready for the Miracle Mile Carnival with them. Yeah exciting times for everyone concerned with that Miracle Mile Carnival certainly rapidly approaching but also for Ricky's team building up very nicely. Yeah definitely he's got a couple of nice young ones coming through and they get named awards Bathurst so they've been educating and that so we've just got to step them up and see where they go from here but Fingers crossed, everything's looking bright for the future, so yeah. It's always an exciting time of the season when the babies step out. Definitely, it's an exciting time. You take them to the edges and the trials and see if they're going to shape up. And yeah, no, but we're, we're happy with a few of the babies out at the moment. We haven't really put the fresh on them, but they come along nice. Anyone in particular? Uh, there's a little Huntsville cult there I like. Um, he educated last night. Um, yeah, I, I like him. So yeah, fingers crossed he'll head towards Bathurst and be competitive. Well, Ricky, it's been great to catch up with you to find out a little bit about the story. So much of your work goes unrecognised by a lot, except by the man who counts and your boss. Yeah, thanks, Mick. No worries. Thank you.